Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're gonna be doing one of my lovely clients' nails. We're gonna be doing a very fun summer design. I wanted to get on here really quick just to let you guys know that I am gonna be hosting a class here in Pensacola, Florida. So if you are near the area or are willing to travel to come see me alongside Betty Cakes, if you guys do not already follow her, make sure to do so. But we're gonna be doing a two-day class. It's gonna be full of acrylic beginner basics. We're gonna be doing some nail art as well. It's gonna be tons and tons of fun. So if you guys are interested, make sure you guys contact us for more information and to sign up. We look forward to meeting all of you guys. I hope you enjoy the video. Now let's get right into it. Getting right into today's video, we're just gonna start off by removing my client's current design. If you guys are not familiar with the backfill, that's pretty much what I'm doing in this video. So it's pretty much when you take the e-file, file down the majority of the acrylic design that she has. Um, I've done it a lot in the past, so for today's video, I'm just going to kind of run through it very quickly so that you guys do not get tired of seeing me file. But you pretty much just go over the surface of the nail over and over again until you get a very thin layer of course always remember when you are filing to move across the nail consistently do not stay in the same spot for a very long time you can tell by the process that i'm doing while removing the acrylic that i start on one side go to the other side go to the top go to the middle go to the bottom and just kind of jump around the entire nail until i get that very thin layer of product left to where i can go ahead and go in with a new design so again, always remember to move around the nail consistently. I am using my EFA at a speed of about 12,000 RPMs for this process. And along with that, I'm actually using a new bit that I have never tried before, but all my other bits are struggling. <laughs> They're very old and I need to replace them. And I found this one in my stash. I definitely recommend it. I really, really liked it. It made the speed super, super quick when doing this step. So definitely recommend it if you guys are interested in trying this out. Now the top is rounded and it is a safety bit so you guys do not have to worry about nicking your client obviously always take precaution when doing any type of filing on a client you want to make sure that you are extra careful Now we're gonna go in and file the natural nail. Basically what we're doing is removing any lifting at this point. So you'll see me take my mandrel bit and a sanding band and just go very carefully on top of the acrylic. And I'm pretty much just trying to remove that lifted area if there's any. And then I just very, very quickly go on top of her natural nail just to buff off the shine. We're not overly filing her natural nail. It is important to keep the integrity of her nail. So I'm just pretty much just going very lightly, buffing the surface of that nail. My e-file is at a speed of 4,000 RPMs, always during my prep process. So make sure you guys have it at a very low speed with very light pressure on your handpiece. Now you can tell what areas are lifted. They are white in comparison to the rest of the acrylic attached to the nail. So that's a really good indication of whether your client has lifting or not. You wanna fully remove that. Otherwise, moisture can get trapped underneath and they can get greeny. So we wanna avoid that at all costs. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this process on the rest of the nails. Then we're gonna be prepping around that cuticle area. Now I've been loving for my cuticle prep this bit. It's a very tiny, thin, tapered bit and I feel like it's perfect for that cuticle area. If you're scared of a needle bit, this is a really good alternative because it's still thin enough to get into those hard to reach areas. And I know it can be a little bit terrifying if you're not comfortable using an e-file. So this one is a really good way to get into those hard to reach areas without being concerned of cutting your client. 
Now once I'm done debulking that acrylic and prepping the natural nail, we're gonna be going in and reshaping these nails. That's my preference. You absolutely can skip this step, but for my sanity, I feel like filing them before I go in with my acrylic application, it just makes me feel so much better and it just makes everything lay a lot cleaner and at the end you won't have to do too much filing versus if you go in with a wonky shaped nail, you'll definitely have to fix that at the end. I'm going in with a lint-free wipe and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe. This is gonna help dehydrate the nail and remove excess oils, which will ultimately cause lifting if they're not properly removed. So always, always, always remember to dehydrate the nail if you want everything to stick very well. Now I'm actually going in with the acrylic primer from Kiara Sky. I recently switched Britney's primer to this one so i figured i would just consistently use it on my clients if you guys are not aware of the fact that clients can become accustomed to a specific product your natural nail will get used to it and sometimes they can become allergic to it or it can just start lifting out of nowhere even if it's been working really well for a really long time so i figured i would go ahead and switch it up and use this primer instead of the one that i typically use just to see if her retention gets a little bit better because i have been noticing that she's been getting a little bit of lifting here and there and we're going straight into our acrylic application for today's video i am using the acrylic brush in a size 14 from not polish absolutely love and recommend this brush if you guys are looking for one Along with that, I'm using the Kiara Sky Monomer for today's video. I figured I would also go ahead and use that. It works really, really well with every single product that you will test it with. So I figured I would give it a go also for my clients. I'm going in with Plum Sherbert from Profiles Backstage on the pinky. I know I already applied it and I'm way past that. Um, it's a really, really pretty purple. For the design that we're doing, I figured I would go ahead and use the acrylics to match it instead of having to go in with a gel polish and then go in on top with nail art. So I'm just using the color of the nail art on the base as well. Now for this beautiful green, I actually used it in my snake video. It is a glow in the dark color, super, super pigmented, very, very blendable. <laughs> Now for this beautiful orange color, this one is called Peeling Good from Kiara Sky. Also love Kiara Sky colored acrylics. They're super, super opaque and also very blendable, which I always recommend, especially when you're going in to cover a color that is already on the nail. You wanna make sure you pick out your most opaquest colors that you have so that you don't have any of that color coming through on top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply that on the middle finger and the index finger because they have both that same color as the base.
Now we're going to be doing a very beautiful pink on the thumb. And for this color, we're using the Glam & Glitz Color in Candy Burst. It does have a slight gold shimmer to it, which my client did not mind. So I went ahead and used it. I felt like it was a perfect pink for the design that we were going to be doing. So I went ahead and applied that on the entire nail as well. We're going to be doing the exact same design on the other hand. So I'm just going to be showing you guys the process on this one. And of course, we're gonna be going in and encapsulating these nails. I like to apply my color acrylic very thin, not only to save product, but ultimately whenever you use a colored acrylic, the pigment makes the acrylic a little bit less strong. So we're gonna be going in and adding that clear layer, not only to save product, save money, but we're gonna be adding that strength back into the acrylic set that we need. Uh, especially for longer nails, always, always, always make sure you guys encapsulate. And for this step, I'm just using my clear acrylic from Not Polish, adding a thin layer of that on every single nail on the entire surface of the nails. Now we're going in to our filing process. For this step, I'm using the e-file at a speed of 11,000 RPMs. And I'm actually using this safety bit from Not Polish as well. I've been loving their bits. I honestly hadn't tried them in a while. And I said, why not? This one is just a rounded safety bit and it is a fine grit, which is perfect for filing at the end. So everything is nice and smooth. And I'm just going carefully around that cuticle area and then filing the entire surface of the nail. Because these nails are short, I'm easily able to go in horizontally and file. Versus with my long nails, I like to go in vertically up and down. Just always make sure that you're very, very, very well holding that finger and your handpiece. Otherwise, sometimes it can skip and it scares you and it scares your client too. So make sure you guys are always careful in that. Now we're going in and we're just gonna tidy up that shape once again. Because I already pre-shaped them, this is gonna be very minimal filing. I'm just going in on the sides, making sure that I didn't get any acrylic spilled over. And then we're gonna be flipping the hand around to look at the nails from the client's perspective and file that tip that way. You're gonna actually be able to get a glimpse of that on today's video. Surprisingly, the angle that I had the camera in captured it slightly. So you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about when I say that on a client. Now for the thumb, I do like to file it this way. It's just easier and more comfortable for the client. Just hold it very, very sturdy and file up and down. And then once again, we're flipping it and I'm just gonna go in and file it in the direction. Now 
I'm cleaning up the nails very, very quickly using a lip free wipe and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe once again. I would have buffed, but I left my buffers at home. I got a restock of them and I have not brought them to the salon, so we're just going with it. I think they're smooth enough for me to go in and do the nail art. We're just gonna get right into it with this beautiful yellow color that I mixed. I actually went in and mixed my pastel yellow color from the liners from Not Polish and then my regular yellow from Profiles Backstage from their frosting gel paints. And I'm just going in and doing like the yin and yang kind of design. One side yellow, the other side orange, and then we're gonna be doing the little dots in the corresponding color. So I'm gonna try to do all of the yellow portions first and then go in and cure in the light. And then we're gonna be switching the hands while one is in the light, I work on the other hand. Now we're going in and doing smiley faces on each ring finger and we're doing a yellow one, a pink one, and an orange one just to kind of match the vibe. And I'm just doing like partial circles for the smiley face and then we're gonna be doing the details in black. Now we're gonna be doing a pink flower on the pinky and I'm just doing my basic little petals going around and then we're gonna be doing the center yellow. And then of course, as always, make sure you guys cure in the light whenever you feel it is necessary. I try to do all the colors that I'm able to do at once and then pop it in the light. Um, but if you're able to do the entire design without, then by all means. I am leaving the more intricate nails for the end, so we're pretty much starting off with the basic designs. And then we're gonna be doing a checkered design on the middle finger. And I am actually not gonna be showing you guys the thumb because it's something that I've done a ton on my channel already. So we're just gonna be doing that checkered design and again, always remember to cure in the light whenever you feel it is necessary. So since I was working with the pink color already, I went ahead and did the checker design. For future reference, if you guys are doing a checker type of design, do lines. Don't try to be all crazy like me and do one tiny little square at a time. I don't know what my thought process was when I started doing the squares, but just do lines. <laughs> if you start off with a type of like tic-tac-toe line design and then you just infill different portions of it you're gonna get that very easy to get checker design I like I said I don't know what I was thinking but I thought I was cool just doing every individual square
we're gonna be going in with the smiley faces details and it's pretty much just two little dots you guys kind of get the gist of what a smiley face looks like we're just kind of flipping the faces around just randomly so we're doing two dots a little mouth smile and then the little lines on each side super super simple i am using my frosting gel paint for this in the color black I really, really like the texture of that paint, especially when it comes down to tiny little details like this. I'm going in really quickly with a pastel purple and infilling some of the squares on the checkered nail. I would absolutely recommend trying to match the purple to the other purple that you used in the set. I'm not quite sure what I was thinking, but I feel like it looks a little bit too light in comparison to like all the other colors that I used. So I would very, very much so recommend you guys try to match the colors as best as possible. Now I'm going to be going in and curing that in the light. Once I'm done with all of the designs, I go in with a full 60 second or 90 second cure just to make sure that all the layers are fully cured. Once we're out of the light, I'm going in with my stain resistant top coat. She is a hairstylist, so I 100% recommend if your clients are prone to stains on their nails, this is a really, really good top coat for that. Unfortunately, it is only available in the shiny finish but i feel like it works so well so we're going to be lathering that on very very well making sure that we are covering the entire surface of the design so that we do not get any chipping again placing that in the light for a full 90 seconds once we're out we're cleaning off that tacky layer with a lint-free wipe and a little bit of young nail swipe adding some cuticle oil but that pretty much concludes today's video let me know what you guys think down below thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned a ton and i'll see you guys next time